Hi. Okay. So I wanted to give you a quick bonus video because I forgot to address the question um, or come back to it where teachers were asking what kind of prompts that you use. So I wanted to give you a quick um, overview of what that might look like. So in my um, upper level classes, specifically AP, I might have a folder that's like all idea generation ideas and have prompts and stuff. Um, but I wanted to show you um, what some of these prompts might look like for those students. And then I'll show you quickly what each one, not each one of these, but what one slide might look like and then how I would um, structure that for like a level one. So um, prompts that I might come up with are artists use math, artists use humor, artists transform ordinary into extraordinary, right? Um, artists collect artifacts, artists appropriate, artists challenge, they create new worlds, they create uncomfortable situations, um, define home, identity, nature, uh, respond to social um, concerns, etc. So um, these are kind of examples of what I might use for my prompts. And then um, I want to show you for my photo class, for example, I have these broken into each um, shooting assignment, which is like the artworks, right? So I had September, October, November. So in September, my students were starting to investigate only these three prompts, unless they had something else they wanted to. I always open it so that they can choose what they want um, to investigate as long as they're thinking it thoroughly through and providing that um, proposal sheet for me. But also in, for example, if I go back to my October shooting, I might only still have three options as well, but in those, then they can either pursue something from September that they didn't pursue or October. So then they have like multiple, now they have six options to choose from. So in this, again, I tried to go with something aesthetic, something conceptual, and maybe something um, more, like globally concerning. So you can see um, this might not have been aesthetic, but I did focus on um, how they might um, think about their own self, right? So in this example, I have artists define home. And so in photography, I set them up with an article or a video of somebody talking and I need to, this has been like a restructuring that I've done. And I really like the way that this is going. So I need to do this for my other classes as well. But basically um, they are to be exposed to those three. They, they have three, those three prompts. They need to look at each one of these. They need to view the article, the video, etc., And then they need to do the discussion board for all three prompts but then they get to choose one. So here I'm exposing them to all three, but then they choose only one to kind of focus on or propose their own. So in this case, Artist Define Home, um, I have this article about um, how this particular photographer um, uh, spent time to consider the idea of home, what that looked like, and then they respond to the discussion. And then if they're really interested in this, these are things to consider. So what types, what are some types of homes? What are symbols of homes? What are physical homes? What are qualities about home? Um, what are some examples of what home looks like without using images of an actual house, right? So getting them to think outside the box. And then I have the process for them, tips for starting, because sometimes that's really hard, like how do I start? So create a word web, um, ask me to explain, go for a walk around the neighborhood, collect information, jot down thoughts, etc. And then here they take two rolls of film that tells that story of home. And then they submit their artwork. They have to print four enlargements to tell their story. So with the contact print. Um, so this kind of explains how I set it up for photo. So you can see, for example, take a stand. How I'm utilizing a particular photographer or information. So this is Lewis Hine and you know, like this is a video, I think it's like a Time Magazine video or something like that, um, where they talk through his kind of his, um, oh yeah, photos time, there it is. Um, so where he talks through his process of how he um, has now made a change, right? He, by, by videoing, or excuse me, videoing, by photographing the working conditions, how he was able to then um, take a stand and how that has changed all of our labor um, situation since then, right? So you can kind of see, again, 
how they're exposed to all of this, but then they choose what they're interested in, in talking about. So um, in jewelry, uh, here's a good example of jewelry. I have home, this is what it would look like. So I try to make it specific to the content so that students see those examples. So these are 3D examples um, of artists to find home. What could it mean? Um, what should I do? This particular, this is a good example. I use this for ceramics. A student made like a sock and then she drew little, uh, like a pattern print of little houses, like, you know, your pretty stereotypical house uh, pattern. And then on the sole of the sock, it was had like holes in it and it was like it had Mars on it. And it was trying to show that home for her was wherever she went. Right. Um, so you can kind of see examples of that. And then how could this look in jewelry? Right. And how could you use other materials? So, again, here's a great example where students could do something like this, where maybe they're showing stamping, sawing, piercing and soldering. But then here they could be exploring all, site, all types of materials, right? So they're stamping, they're uh, piercing, they're maybe using rivets, they're um, doing jump rings, and maybe they're finding found objects, they're using manipulating wire, etc. And here's another example where maybe in my level one, I might do not do like a hinged box, right? I don't teach them how to do that. I usually teach them in like jewelry three, four. But how students might re use this to reinterpret what they can within their limitations. Or sometimes I can teach, if the kid is like more advanced and has the patience and interest, I might teach them a more advanced um, technique. And then from there, they can utilize that and, and think like, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to take jewelry two, three, four. I get to learn how to set a stone. I get to learn how to do hinge boxes. How cool. So um, hopefully that explains, and again, like in my AP, I kind of show much shorter examples of this. Um, so artists collect, what could this look like? How are you documenting it? What materials are you using? Um, could you do this? These are all made out of clay. Now, I will say you notice that a lot of times my artworks that I'm showing don't have in, uh, links or citations, which is terrible. And I'm going to tell you that right now that I built these so quickly years ago. I haven't really gone back, but um, that will probably be a goal of mine is to link everything. I think I was trying to find resources and images so quickly that I just wanted my students to get examples. Um, but I think... Go, moving forward in my practice, I really want to make sure that I'm citing. And um, that's also really helpful because then students are like, oh, I really liked that artwork by that artist. Now I can go back and find that artist and investigate more about them. So, um, you know, there's only so much time in the day and that is probably my weakness right now. So forgive me for that. Okay, um, so hopefully that explains kind of examples of my prompts and how I get them to start thinking. A lot of times even just giving them these prompts ahead of time, you know, or exposing them, they might say, I don't want to do those, but that did make me think about doing this. And so then I propose this. And so again, that's where I say like, whatever you want to think about and pursue, anytime a student has a personal connection with it, they're going to be more invested in their artwork and be more interested in spending the time to work on it. I mean, when I'm told um, that I have to create an artwork about nature, but I'm really interested in talking about, you know, um, COVID or Black Lives Matter, then I get kind of angry and irritable and my artwork doesn't turn out and I'm not invested and I'm frustrated or vice versa, whatever. So hopefully that makes sense as far as prompts.